Hey guys, I'm Taylor at Go Power Sports. Today we're going to be installing our Stage 1 Performance Kit on a 212cc Predator Hemi engine. In this kit, you have an air filter, an air filter adapter, your choice of header pipe. Today we're going with the 5438. You can add a muffler, exhaust gasket, valve springs, vent filter kit. Today we're going to be using this 4T oil. We're going to break in the engine, we're going to do a dyno run, and then we're going to install the Stage 1 kit and show you the difference after we run a dyno run with the Stage 1 kit. You win! Perfect! All right, that dyno run, the uh, Predator 212 Hemi made its uh, peak torque at 3,400 RPMs and it was 12 foot-pounds of torque. And at 3,600 RPMs, it made 7.59 horsepower, right at about the seven, seven and a half claim that Predator makes. We're gonna get this thing off the dyno, get it back over on our bench. We'll install the stage one kit, come back and dyno it again and show you the graph. All right, we got our engine back here on the bench. We're gonna start the stage one install. He's gonna start by taking off the exhaust. For this, we're gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench. You can use a 13 millimeter wrench or a 13 millimeter socket. Next up is removing the air filter box. For that, you just need a 10 millimeter socket and impact or ratchet. Use dikes or cutters to go ahead and snip this. You'll want to take this hose off of the air filter box. You'll put that back on for the vent filter kit. Remove the spark plug. From here, he's going to drop the bowl of the carburetor using a 10 millimeter wrench or socket, and he will change out the main jet. In this stage one kit, the jets are taped to the side of the box. Also in that little baggie are the intake gaskets if you happen to tear some when you're taking them off. To remove that jet, you're gonna use a, a flathead screwdriver. Yeah, the E-tube should just drop right out. Sometimes it stays up inside the carb.
Now he's going to install the air filter adapter. First we'll put on the choke bracket. You'll get that screw tight and in relative position. After you get the air filter adapter on, you can adjust that bracket. You're going to use the stock nuts to put that air filter adapter on and you will need a quarter inch drive 10 millimeter socket. These are smaller than a 3H drive and allows you to get the nut all the way on. As you can see, as he installed that, he went back and forth between the two nuts to make sure he drew the air filter adapter on evenly. And don't over tighten it. You can strip out those nuts. On these Predators, there is a low oil sensor. It's a good idea to take that off. Basically, it needs to be one of the first things you do to do. As you're riding a go-kart or a mini bike, and your oil is sloshing around in the engine, if it drops below that sensor, it'll shut the engine off. The yellow wire coming out of that sensor, you're gonna clip it. Then you can unplug it and take off the whole box. And then I like to tighten them. Just snug them up. Alrighty, tight. Now he's gonna take off the valve cover. This is an eight millimeter socket. As you're rotating the engine through, The valves are opening and closing, and that last, this flutter right there, that's your compression release clicking on and off. Once you pass that, make sure your piston's at top dead center, then you can change out the springs one of two ways. You can use an Allen wrench to go in there and hold the valve closed. You can use an air compressor tool, basically. It's a tool you screw in there, you hook up air to it, and it fills the chamber full of air and keeps the valves closed. Or you can take some starter rope, some string, you pack it down in there until it's tight, and that will hold the valves closed as well. He's going to use the Allen wrench method. That is a nine millimeter wrench to bust the jam nuts loose. Now he's backing those out just far enough to get the push rods out of the way so your rockers can rock all the way back. the lash caps. Don't lose the lash caps. Here's a lash cap on the intake and the exhaust side. And these are slip fit retainers.
gonna put the lash caps back on. Put the push rods back in the bottom of the rocker and then he'll adjust the valves. We're gonna set these valves at zero lash. When you do this, you want to make sure after you get them set at zero that you can still spin the push rod free by hand and he's going to walk through that and show you. I usually rotate it over one good time and then watch for the exhaust stroke, intake stroke, and then the exhaust just a little bit, and then watch for the piston to come up all the way to the top, and that's when you make sure everything's set. You go down here with your fingers and just spin the uh, push rods, and if they spin freely, you know you set them right. And these are already, these are just jam style, so that's all you do. You can set them anywhere from zero lash all the way to three thousandths. If you set them at three, as your engine heats up and warms up, if you have to restart it, it, it tends to have quite a bit of kickback as you pull the rope. At zero, when the engine warms up, they'll loosen up to about two, one and a half, two thousandths. He's gonna do the exhaust system now. He's got the gasket on, the header pipe, and in our exhaust kit, when you add that to the stage one, you get the lock washers and the two eight millimeter nuts. Again, he's gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench. After he gets that tight, he's gonna put on the header safety sleeve. This is also an add-on to the kit. After he gets that on, he will put on the uh, one and five sixteenths muffler. He's going to use a 10 mil socket and ratchet to tighten up the clamp. You want to get these clamps pretty tight. A good test to do once you think you have it tight enough, try to twist the muffler around. If you can't twist it, uh, you have it tight enough. But after you run it through a heat cycle, you'll want to recheck that and make sure your muffler is not going to fall off. Park plug. So we're going to go ahead and back off this throttle stop screw. We were hitting about 4,000 RPM on the dyno. We're going to back it out and see how high of an RPM it can get. This is also where you can slow it down if you have uh, your kid riding the go-kart or mini bike. You can screw that in and really play with how far they can open the throttle. In the vent kit, you have two different size vent filters. The smaller of the two is going to go up here for your fuel tank. And it also comes with small zip ties. The larger of the two vent filters will get shimmed with the piece of supplied fuel line that fuel line will get shoved into the valve cover vent and then he'll install the whole assembly.
and tie it as well. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. He's now going to put on the air filter. and tighten up the clamp with a Phillips head screwdriver. In the Stage 1 kit, you have a choice of a few different colors. This is our black nylon filter cover. And the last thing he's gonna do to this engine is go ahead and swap or turn the starter. For most go-karts and mini-bikes, you want to rotate this to the starter is back here so that you can access it. Stage one kit is complete. We're gonna take this back to the dyno, get another run, and we'll show you the graph comparing the two runs. That run, we got uh, 3,600 RPMs was our max torque, 13.83 uh, foot-pounds of torque, and we got 9.75 horsepower, peak horsepower, at 3,800 RPMs with the Stage 1 kit. Now we're going to lay those graphs on top of each other. He's going to show you the difference in how they both ran. All right, this is the two graphs overlaid. The bottom red horsepower was from bone stock engine, and the green was this current, and up here in the blues are the torque graphs. Uh, if we come down here to 3600 RPMs, earlier the engine at 3600 made 7.46, and the uh, stage one kit made 9.44, so that's almost exactly two horsepower more. Peak horsepower earlier, was approximately 3,500 RPMs, and it made 7.7 .7 horsepower. And with the Stage 1 kit, peak horsepower was 9.75. So that's exactly two horsepower there as well. So it looks like from lower down here, 3,200 RPMs and up, you're gaining at least two horsepower gain from the Stage 1 kit. So I think the results speak for themselves. This stage one kit, two horsepower gain, that's pretty big, especially hitting nine and a half horsepower, 3,600 RPMs. You can buy this stage one kit direct from our website. You can also buy a stage one Predator engine. It's already built up, governor's removed, it's got the valve springs, it's got your exhaust kit, the bigger jet and the carburetor. All that is done by Paul here at the shop and you can buy that off our website as well. Make sure you click subscribe below and see you next time.